the talks between uh, NSN IM and Government of India, this is rather misleading. For the last 20 years, they have been uh, meeting, discussing, deliberating, debating, analyzing all issues related to Naga problem. I am only a mere citizen of the country who is keenly interested in the final resolution of the Naga problem. People who are talking about 16-point agreement, they are neither born nor too young to know the kind of situation prevalent at that point of time. Naga people have to suffer unseen, unheard, unloved by the world. I'm not the architect. Architect work, Takrain Goliba, Kevijusa, Sasha Ayer, and then um, that's um, Jasuke. All of them were there. I have got the right to tell Indian leaders uh, what is best for Naga people. the talks between uh, NSN IM and Government of India, this is rather misleading. My position vis-a-vis -vis Naga issue is like this. All these years, the negotiation between the Government of India and the leaders of the underground are confined to these groups, one side NSN IM and the other side is NNBGs. And therefore, <clears throat> I am only a mere citizen of the country who is keenly interested in the final resolution of the Naga problem. And therefore, I cannot take on this uh, political uh, this, uh, discussion because it is entirely up to the party's concern to discuss, to debate, and to arrive at an amicable political solution. For the last 20 years, they have been uh, meeting, discussing, deliberating, debating, analyzing all issues related to Naga problem. And they have had these meetings in foreign countries, at different places, at different times. And I presume, I think the people expect that during this period, 20 years, they might have thoroughly discussed about sovereignty, integration, flag, constitution, and so on and so forth. Because in the beginning, they were saying that we shall discuss only on prime minister level and foreign countries in the presence of um, third country that was their uh, stand. But as uh, years roll by, keeping in the changes in the contemporary world, they have come back today and they have encamped in New Delhi and started meeting frequently the leaders of India. And at long last, perhaps, after thoroughly analyzing, discussing, examining various points, maybe a sovereignty, integration issue, flag issues, constitutional issues, I think they have arrived at a consensus between the parties and they have put that into writing, that is, agreement, which is known as Framework Agreement signed on 3rd August 2015 in the presence of the Prime Minister, Home Minister, and I think uh, Mr. This, uh, <coughs> advisor to this uh, National Ad Security Advisor also on one side. Their side, uh, all the dignitaries belonging to NSNI murder, and after putting their signature, 
on the body of the framework a German. We were witnessing uh, in the TV, they shook hands uh, with Prime Minister, with the Home Minister, with the Security Advisor, and all of them clapped hands. So it clearly shows that they have consciously, knowingly, formally, I think, uh, amended their signature on the body of this framework agreement. And uh, you'll notice that when you go through the framework agreement which they have circulated, there neither sovereignty nor integration nor flag or constitution figure. Not only that, on the day of signing that agreement, they have not raised any other issues except clapping hands, shaking hands. And therefore, I believe that whatever they have done, they have carefully examined word by word, line by line, and they might have uh, come to the conclusion that in the best interest of the people of Nagaland and also the government of India, I think they had drawn up this uh, framework agreement. And I believe under the present circumstances, I think this much can be done by any group, neither government of India nor NSM. They don't have magic van with them. So whatever is uh, possible, I think they have drawn up, and therefore they should be proud to tell our people that we have endeavored, worked, sacrificed, and at last, at least, we have consensually or unanimously drawn up this uh, for the benefit of the people of Nagaland and also the government of India. Whatever they had drawn up, they may call it competencies or agree position, they should clearly define the autonomy under which the Naga people should work. Secondly, they should also clearly spell out what are the relevant provisions which we can incorporate in the Constitution of India. Because as you know, whatever they have agreed, if some of them are to be incorporated, it has to be incorporated in the Constitution of India through Parliament. And therefore, the question of separate constitution, I don't understand. Because the regional council or uh, territorial council agreed upon for Manipur, Naga area, as well as uh, Arunachal. This is part of the schedule sit of the Constitution of India, like Darjeeling model, like Badolan model, like Gorbi model. So once they have accepted that kind of arrangement, the question of uh, several constitution uh, do not uh, arise in my opinion. Not only that, when negotiation was on, it was to give and take. In other words, to compromise on issues which would be able to accommodate each other's views. And I think uh, during this 20 years time, after so much of consideration, they have already drawn up. And that time they have not uh, mentioned anything about this. And to my mind, whether it is flag or constitution, even after settlement, it can be, uh, I think, taken up uh, democratically. Uh, because the sum and substance of any agreement should be the autonomy whereby the people can function freely, effectively, transparently. Huh. I think a fair psychosis has been spread in the minds of Naga people. Mm. And now people are afraid to speak out. Mm. And under this kind of environment of fear, huh, how can you think that uh, you are listening to the voice of the people? 
let this, uh, I think, uh, demonic force be removed. Let the people also have a chance to say that we want this, we want this, we want this. And that can be incorporated in any of the agreements or understanding with the government of India. We should not be bound only by political uh, agitation, political uh, talks. Because you cannot put the entire thing in one basket, all the eggs. And politics is not the only way in the life of a nation or a people. Economic development, scientific development, educational development, social development, cultural development. So many things are there. So why should you go on talking, talking only about this politics? We should not be too obsessed with politics. And because of this uncertainty, the younger generation who would like to come out, who would like to compete, not only here, in the country, in the world, because they have got the capacity to do that, but we are not giving them this space for the development. Why? Because of this uncertainty. And therefore, this roadblock should be removed so that our younger generation can, I think, play their effective role according to their genius. Because they are much more intelligent, much more far-sighted, much more knowledgeable than the older generation. And since what we are talking today is for the younger generation. So why should we enchain them? Hmm. Why should we restrict them? As old men, I always feel that that opportunity should be given. And by whom? By us. And they should inherit a legacy of peace, unity, harmony, and a progressive society. I have been telling from the very beginning, those people who are talking about 16-point agreement, they are neither born nor too young to know the kind of situation prevalent at that point of time. Because of armed conflict, houses were burned, granaries were burned, village were stockaded, and the movement was restricted. Then famine was there, hunger was there, and then lots of disease. And the Naga people have to suffer unseen, unheard, unloved by the world. So at that point of time, when we were about to surrender, we didn't like to go back to Assam as a district after demanding our sovereignty. And therefore, leaders of that time, led by Dr. Ingoliba, Mr. Chasuki, Vizol, Kevichusa, Sashembara Nair, Enai Jamir, I think, Chidin Jamir, they came out that something should be done to salvage the hopes and aspirations of the Naga people. Because we don't like them to bury under the scorch of that uh, atrocities committed on us. So, 16 representatives of 16 uh, these, uh, tribes were consulted. Not only once, three conventions. And at that time, I was only joint secretary, fresh from college. Hmm. And naturally, we are followers. Uh, but our leaders, senior leaders were there. So we have prepared a memorandum, we call it 16-point agreement. And it was circulated. And in 1959, at Mogokcho, 16 tribes representatives were assembled. We were about 5,000. Five days we have deliberated on this 16-point memorandum digested, debated, then unanimously we have adopted that this should be the basis for political negotiation with the government of India. Accordingly, delegation was uh, 
constituted, we call it um, negotiating body, and they were entrusted to talk with the Prime Minister of India. So in 1960, we went there, discussed, and then uh, the statehood was granted. There's the 16th state of the Indian Union. Now you'll find Nagaland is first federal 16 number. And what was the gist of this 16 point? 371A. The land and resources, our religious practices, social practices, uh, we have protected. And we have borrowed this provisions from nine point agreement drawn up between Naga National Council and Sir Akbar Haidri in 1947. So we brought it and made it a constitutional provision to safeguard the interests of the Naga people. And therefore those I am, many of them, I think the, they have never participated in this Naga people convention, but just because there's nothing to talk, they're always uh, accusing me. I'm not the architect. Architect work, Dr. Ingoliba, Kevijusa, Sasha Ayer, and then um, Jasuke, all of them were there. So whatever they're saying, I think they are without knowing the background. So I, I, one day people ask me, what do you say? Well, we are Christian. And in the Bible it is said, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So I said, since they don't know the background of 16 point, they don't know the situation obtaining in that point, at that point of time, they're saying it. So out of ignorance, they're accusing me. So since they don't know, so I forgive them. Forgive them for they do not what they are saying. That is what I replied. As elderly person who have involved in the Naga political affairs for the last more than 60 years, I have got the right to tell Indian leaders uh, what had happened and what is going to happen and what is best for Naga people, according to my view. And as a, uh, as a citizen, everyone has got the right to tell the highest authority what is best for the people he represents. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.